Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian and this is Quest for Faith. Glad you're tuning in today. Today we're going to be hitting up the topic of Mary and the Saints and what does a Catholic Church worship Mary like a goddess? I don't know. We're going to find out. And so make sure before we get going that you like, share, subscribe, share it with your friends and family that are curious about this topic. So let's dig into it. So we've been going through these videos, walking through my quest, where it started with just asking a simple question, why were seven books removed from the Bible? And then moving on to look at what did the first century church believe? How did they practice their faith? And then looking into Peter and the Pope and did the was there an office of a Pope? And, I, and it just kept coming in, yes, 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 yes. And it just kept leading me towards the Catholic Church. And, but there's some issues. Growing up, Church of Christ, I really have with the Catholic Church that I need to vet. And Mary and the Saints is definitely one of them. And this is an area where the more I researched, the more I realized there's really a misunderstanding between Protestants and Catholics when it comes to Mary. Um, and this goes into the statues of the saints, all that kind of stuff, praying to the saints. And the way I kind of start breaking this down and what helped this click to me is, again, a question. Do you think when you die, when we die, are we still a part of Christ's church? I think the easy answer is yes. Of course we are. We're still part of the body of the church. And it even says in, in Revelations that they can hear the prayers of the, of, of the living in heaven. That's pretty fascinating. And I believe it's in James where it talks about you're surrounded by the hosts of your church and ancestors. That's pretty compelling evidence there. And so I would say that, yeah, we definitely are still part of Christ's church. And it's interesting, one of the great things about the Catholic Church is the catechism. And you can look in there and go, yeah, this is exactly what the, the Catholics believe. And, and I hate to say it, uh, ending up with the end of 2020 here, um, and it's not the first, and I don't think it'll be the last, but it's definitely a better source than listening to what the Pope says half the time. So um, with stuff coming out of Pope Francis lately, but... The Catechism of the Catholic Church. What do they believe? Well, in uh, in nine forty six, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, section nine forty six, it states that what is the Church if not the assembly of all the saints? The communion of saints is the Church, and it goes on in nine sixty two saying, "We believe in the communion of all the faithful of Christ, those who are pilgrims on earth, people that are alive." The dead who are being purified, that are in purgatory, and the blessed in heaven. So the Catholic Church believes this too. And so it would make sense that they would pray to saints if they see it as they're still part of the church. And that it says in the Bible they can hear the prayers of the living in heaven. So, in Revelation. So, I think it makes a lot of sense. And... and it's funny because I didn't really mean to wear wear this shirt that said pray. But it also comes down to just language. The word pray isn't worship. The word pray actually means to ask. And when you're praying to the saints, you're not praying for them to answer your your prayers. You're praying for them to Pray for you to Christ and God, right? That's what you're doing. And that's exactly what you're doing with Mary. And we'll start off with, with Mary first. And I think, um, actually, let's go with the saints first. And so I love the idea that we can pray and ask the pe people that are already in heaven that are closer to God, that are righteous and holy because they've made it there, 
that we can ask them to pray for us. How great is that? That's a great concept. And I find it reassuring. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, it, it's, I have a sister that, I, I had a sister that died when I was young. She was four years old when she died. And so, yeah, she's in heaven, right? She's not even at the age of accountability, even if you look at it in Protestant or other denominations. She's in heaven. And the fact that I could send up a prayer to Whitney and ask her to pray for my kids. Hey, can you please pray for my kids? I don't know why that just struck me and that kind of flipped the switch for me. Um, so I don't see a problem with praying the saints. So with Mary, right? So do Catholics worship Mary? No, they don't. And they'll flat out tell you that. You ask any Catholic that's a practicing Catholic that understands their faith, they're going to say, no, we do not worship Mary at all. Now, do they, do they uh, consider Mary the Queen of Heaven? Yes, they do. Do they put her on a higher pedestal of sainthood than other saints? Yes, they do. And with the term queen of heaven, that comes back again. Once again, we're talking about the the um, ancient Israel kingdom. And David, King David's wife was not considered the queen. His mother was the queen. So in the is, ancient is, Israeli kingdom, the mother of the king was considered the queen. So it would make perfect sense that if Christ is the king of uh, the king of the kingdom of heaven that his mother would be the queen cuz we're modeling that the ancient Israel kingdom once again. So that's where that term comes from and that's what they mean when they say the queen of heaven. And what they're simply doing when you pray the rosary, which I I have my rosary beads right here. Um when you pray the rosary, you're not worshiping Mary. You're asking her to pray for you. And it's it's interesting when you go through the Hail Mary. And we'll, we'll kind of go through here. It's Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Those first verses are scripture. Right? You're quoting the angel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. That's what the angel says to Mary when he first appears to her. And then her cousin says, blessed are you among women. And of course, her, the fruit of her womb is Jesus, which is obviously bless, blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. I mean, that's a no-brainer. And then the very last sentence is, holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. And I'm sorry, if you're in heaven, you're holy. Mary's in heaven. She's holy. And she's the mother of God. And you're asking her to pray for us poor sinners now in the hour of our death. But it goes deeper than that. And I've talked, and I've, I was, when I was researching all this stuff, I'm looking into what Protestants say about it. And I still see it today with a lot of my friends posting stuff like, like the rosary is, is a tool of Satan. Um, you shouldn't use these. And for anyone that's never actually looked into the rosary, you start off with the Lord's Prayer. So I'm sure Satan wants us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Then you do three Hail Marys. Then you do a um, Glory Be, which is Glory Be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed, uh, bl Glory Be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Right, and then you do a decade of Hail Marys, and another Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, and every time you hit, you go through a decade, you do an Our Father. So I'm sure Satan wants us to say Jesus. There's five decades, so 50 times to say the name of Jesus, 53 times, 
and do the Lord's Prayer six times. Right? Or right, five times. I'm sure Satan wants us to, to repeat that over and over again. Of course he doesn't. It makes no sense for that. But even more when you start breaking it down and what Catholics say that you should do when you're praying the rosary is you're actually meditating on the life of Jesus. That's the purpose of it. You can be meditating on specific individuals and asking Mary to pray for your, for those individuals or, or to pray for you or whatever it may be. You can do that and when you're praying the rosary. But you meditate on the on the joyful or the sorrowful or the glorious uh, mysteries of Jesus' life. You meditate on the nativity or you meditate on, on the presentation, the finding of Jesus in the temple. You are thinking and concentrating on the life of Jesus while you're praying the rosary. And I find that very powerful. I didn't know that's what... what you're you're doing you're either asking mary to pray for you or other people or you're meditating on the on the life of jesus christ that sounds very demonic to me i don't know about y'all but it doesn't but what was the kicker for me that made me go yeah they have something there it's two stories of mary that we have physical proof of Oh, well, one we don't. We have eyewitnesses accounts from a hundred years ago, and physical proof from over almost five hundred years ago. So I'm talking about the Lady of Guadalupe and the Lady of Fatima, and Catholics. What they typically do whenever they say Our Lady of, they mean Mary, but it's when there's a sighting of Mary. So there's their Lady of Victory, where Mary appeared before a battle in in ancient times. Um, and and granted them victory, right, or helped them with victory. Um, but the Lady of Guadalupe, how that came about, and this story is just absolutely fascinating to me. So on December 12th, 1531 in Mexico, right, the Reformation had barely kicked off at this point, and an, an Aztec convert, or I've heard two stories whether he was he converted after this or he had just converted to to becoming a christian from his aztec beliefs he was walking his normal walk from his house to where the mon where the i think going to mass this is how it was originally told to me this guy's name was juan diego and uh he was walking to mass or walking and it was a long trip every single day he'd make this trip and he came over this hill that he always walks on and there's a woman standing at the top of the hill and in the accounts that are written accounts and descriptions he said she was absolutely beautiful kind of almost glowing and she tells him she's mary and um to go to the bishop and ask the bishop to build a chapel in her honor on this hill. And so he goes and the bishop says, no, or does, actually I think the first time wouldn't even meet him. The next day he's going his normal walk, same place. And Mary shows up in the exact same place and asks him to do it again. And he does. And the bishop won't see him third day Juan's like I'm not dealing with this this is crazy it couldn't have actually been Mary like I, I don't even know I mean I'm sure this is probably what he was thinking but he tries to go around the hill and he's in a hurry this time because his uncle is sick and so he's trying to get to a priest to get up to his uncle to uh, read him his last rites because he thinks his uncle's dying and he's in a hurry and <clears throat> Mary appears to him in the road while he's trying to get away from her and he appears to her in the road and she tells him i've visited your uncle he is fine and recovering he's he's well i want you to go up to the hill where we first met and pick up and pick the roses that are growing there and he's like there's no roses up there but he does it because obviously i th i think we all would at this point 
So he goes up to the hill and he sees these beautiful roses. And the type of roses that they were were actually roses that only grow in Spain, where the bishop is from the actual town where the bishop is from is where I guess they were famous from. And so he picks the roses and then Mary tells him to hold out his tunic and she places all the roses in his tunic and has him wrap it up like this. And this tunic that they wore back then, or it wasn't really called a tunic, but that's the best way I'm going to describe it. It's a cloak, pretty much. But it was made out of um, corn husk fiber, right? This isn't a very durable thing that's going to last for a while. I mean, if you put corn husks and just throw them outside, they're going to dissolve pretty quickly. And that's what this fabric was made out of. It was softened up. But this is a, a traditional thing that, that most people would wear when they're traveling in in South America at the time. So he goes to the bishop with these roses. And Mary told him, do not show these roses to anyone unless until you, the bishop is present. And so he find, the bishop finally goes, all right, I'll see this crazy man that keeps talking about Mary. It obviously wasn't Mary. This is the dumbest thing ever. And the dude, the, Juan, as soon as he sees the bishop come in the room, Juan lets his arms down and the roses fall to the floor and there's a perfect painting image of Mary on his tunic, our cloak. And this is where I'm talking about where we have proof of it today. This is it. This is an image of it. It actually is... Um, let me get to that screen. It's actually here. And you could still see it today. This is what Juan was wearing that day. They still have it. It hasn't dissolved. And scientists can't explain that it's still in perfect condition. Which is absolutely phenomenal. They've had different scans of this. They even said there's no brush strokes on this. They, uh, that the painting are not in the fibers of, of the cloth. <laughs> they don't understand how this thing is still around. They tried to recopy this in the 1900s and this, th it's sealed in this, in this uh, portrait now, but it wasn't for hundreds of years. It was just out in the open hanging in this church. And the one that they tried to, they did a copy of and made it the same way that this thing was made dissolved and fell apart within like five to ten years i can't remember the exact like there's a great documentary on amazon that you can watch with this but this is an amazing thing and this whole scenario converted most of the aztecs to christianity and the reason for it is the symbolism that they saw in this image so this was satan's work why would Satan be trying to convert people to Christianity? Right? There's no Baptists in South America at this point, right? Catholics is all you got. There's no Church of Christ. Reformation had barely kicked off at this point. And they saw all these symbols that talked to them through their culture with this um this thing tied around Mary's waist was a sign of pregnancy in their culture. And her hair down meant that she was a virgin. And there's other images in here that would tell them that she's royalty. I mean, it's crazy the stuff that the Aztecs were pointing out with this when, they, when the leaders came to see this. And millions and millions of South Americans converted to Catholicism because of this event. So that just blew my mind. That was actually my kicker, right? That That's the one that sent me over the edge to go, yeah, no, it's totally cool with this Mary thing. God uses Mary to help guide people to her son. The next one is Fatima. And if you don't know about Fatima, Fatima in Fatima, Portugal in 1917, these three children here, Mary appeared to these three children for six months. And there's a great movie that just came out with this this last year. I definitely recommend watching it. You can get it on Vudu or Amazon, and it's not that expensive. It's like nine bucks, to, and you can rent it too. Totally worth watching it. 
Anyways, Mary appears to these three children for six months, and they it, they come out and tell their parents, and then the priests get all upset. Uh, the bishop even comes and tries to tell them to denounce it, that it wasn't Mary, and they're steadfast that it is Mary that's appearing to them. And so people start showing up. And by the last sighting of Mary, this is a picture of the crowd. Thou tens of thousands of people showed up to this thing. And Mary appears to them, and there, it's called the Three Secrets of Fatima. You can research it, but it, it's pretty fascinating. Like she even mentions the sins of Russia. Uh, Mary does to the children and these children it's 1917 so the Bolshevik revolution hadn't even happened in Russia yet and she's talking about the sins of Russia will spread throughout the world and that's communism and Marxism and you see this crowd and it's when the day started it was pouring down rain just soaking wet there's reporters out there like like here's a news article from it. There's reporters out there, there's believers, there's non-believers, there's soldiers out there, the mayor of the towns out there who was who was uh not even a believer, he was an atheist. Um <clears throat> and they call it the sun miracle of, of Fatima the sun started pulsating and moving around in the sky. And supposedly this is one of the original images. I can't verify that. Don't quote me on any of that. But you can look up the actual news articles with pictures that people had taken and film that people had taken. This is a real event that happened and tens of thousands of people were witnesses to this. And what was Mary's message? Repent. Pray amazing so when i hear people start talking about now learning all this and mary's mary doesn't deserve to get prayed to praying's worshiping when really when you pray you're asking <laughs> when you go through all this it, it it's not a problem and i was pleasantly surprised to research all this and find all this stuff out and um no i'm not great at praying the rosary every day i'm still trying to get in the habit of it but i, I do and it's been a blessing and it actually it helped improve my prayer life in other ways too so that's mary and the saints i hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned some new stuff uh definitely research all this stuff on your own right i mean this is a quick 23 24 minute youtube video i can't explain everything and show everything so um i hope you liked it like share subscribe share it with your friends please uh let's grow this channel so we can do some good in the world all right y'all i appreciate it have a great evening talk to y'all later